This week on the CNET Tech Review, Windows Phone 7 gets a mango makeover. Summer movie apps coming soon to a touchscreen near you. Blu-ray discs are almost an afterthought for our top five players. And get down and dirty with Dropbox. It's all coming up right now. Hi everyone, I'm Molly Wood and welcome to the CNET Tech Review where we collect our hottest videos of the week and tell you what's good and what's bad in the world of tech, plus offer some unique tech wisdom in the form of the bottom line. Let's start with the good. Microsoft to Steve Jobs. We'll see your 200 new features in iOS 5 and raise you 500 new features in Windows Phone Mango. Boom! In fact, there's so much going on with Mango that cell phone editors Bonnie Cha and Jessica Dolcourt decided to split up review duties on this one. Take a look at their two-part first look. Back in November, Microsoft launched its new mobile operating system, Windows Phone 7, and it's about to get a big ol' update. Hey everyone, I'm Bonnie Cha, senior editor at CNET.com, and I'm here to bring you a first look at some of the new features of Windows Phone Mango which will officially be called Windows Phone 7.5 when it's released this fall. The update will bring more than 500 new features, but a lot of it focuses on three key areas, communications, apps, and internet. So what are the new communications features? Well, first, in terms of messaging, you can now link multiple email accounts into a single inbox. It's easy to set up, and I like that Microsoft gives you the option to pick and choose which accounts to link because I like to keep my work email separate from my personal email. It's also easier to keep track of messages thanks to the new conversation view. Email threads are now grouped together and marked for quick identification in your inbox so you no longer have to scroll through every single message trying to find a response. In the People Hub, you can now create group contacts. Once you've set up a group, you can text or email everyone at once and view the latest updates and photos of just those group members instead of having to sort through your entire contacts feed. Windows Phone 7.5 also makes it easier for you to post to your social networks with an enhanced live tile. Currently, the Me tile only lets you post to Facebook and see what's new in your profile, but with the Mango update, you'll be able to post a message, check into places, see notifications, and set your chat status. And last but not least, Mango is going to add support for Twitter and LinkedIn accounts in the People Hub. Unfortunately, since we didn't have final software, this feature wasn't activated on our review units, but we're told that it will act the same way as Facebook does. So you'll see your friends' tweets and LinkedIn updates right in the What's New section. Now, I know none of these features are new to other platforms, but what I like about Windows Phone is how they integrated it all. A lot of the time with competing OSs, to do the same things like checking Facebook, you have to open a separate app. But with Windows Phone, it's integrated with your contacts, the picture hub, and other areas of the phone. Relevant content shows up in relevant places, and you don't have to think about it or do extra work. It's a smarter approach, and I think it's where Windows Phone really succeeds, but the challenge for Microsoft is to make everyone else understand that. Like I said earlier, there's a lot more to the Windows Phone Mango update, and this is just the tip of the iceberg, so be sure to check out our full preview for more. I'm Bonnie Chan. This has been your first look at the communication features of Windows Phone Mango Update. Hey everyone, I'm Jessica Dahlcourt with CNET. What I've got for you today is a look at some of the new app features coming your way in Windows Phone Mango, which will otherwise be known as Windows Phone 7.5. Microsoft has spent a lot of time and energy working on apps with this release, so they may or may not have the most programs in their app store, but I do give Microsoft credit for trying to integrate those apps in useful ways. For example, when you search for a movie or a product or a business in Bing, you're now going to see suggestions for relevant apps that you can download and also a list of apps that you already have. And the same is going to go for apps in the music and pictures hubs as well. You might not see every app in those lists that you think you should. That's because the app publisher has to enable apps to connect with the feature in order for that to happen. Another app that has some really neat tools is Bing. There's Local Scout, which is sort of like Yelp for restaurants and businesses nearby. And there's Music ID, which is a lot like Shazam. Music ID essentially matches the sound of recorded music that it hears to the Zoom Music database. And it will, of course, help you buy those songs as well. Then there's Bing Vision, and this is probably one of the update's most ambitious apps. It scans barcodes and also book and magazine covers, posters, and DVD covers to identify search results online. 
It can also attempt to scan and translate text into numerous languages. That was a little less successful for me. Now, I did have some problems with Bing Vision not recognizing all of the images that I sent its way, so hopefully Microsoft will be able to improve upon the tool before the final version is released. Okay, now the last new feature that I want to show you is multitasking. To easily switch from one open app to another, you just press and hold the back arrow under the screen. You'll see the apps shrink into thumbnail sizes, and then you can swipe around and see and then select the open pages. Just remember though that this is a technical preview, so Microsoft has more time to refine some of its features before the update officially comes out this fall. Once again, I'm Jessica Dahlcourt with CNET. This is Windows Phone Mango, and don't forget to check out our hands-on review of the Mango preview on CNET.com. As Jessica mentioned, they did only have a technical preview of Windows Phone 7.5 to work with, so look for our full reviews of the new OS and, of course, new handsets when the final version is released. Next up, we've got the latest Editor's Choice honoree in the gaming desktop category. The Digital Storm Ode Level 3 combines sleek design elements with blazing performance and just one tiny little quirk. Hi, I'm Rich Brown, Senior Editor for CNET.com. Today we're going to take a look at the Editor's Choice winning Digital Storm Ode Level 3. So this is a fixed configuration gaming desktop. It costs about $2,400 and it's actually one of the best systems we've seen in this price range. It has fast gaming performance, an overclocked Intel Core i7 CPU, and pretty much every feature we'd expect to find for this price. One of the things we like most about this system is its external design. This white and black case is pretty handsome and it's actually convenient to use. You'll see the front panel here is nice and clean. It's got a Blu-ray DVD combo drive here up top. Now here on the top of the case, there's a couple ports. You've got uh, four USB 2 ports, a USB 3 port, Firewire inputs, as well as a couple of analog audio jacks. And this dial here will let you control the fan speed in case you want to kind of dial down the noise as you're using the system. On the back of the system, you'll see one of our few criticisms. You'll notice this wire coming out from the case and into the USB 3 port here in the back. That actually connects this USB 3 port to the USB 3 port at the top of the case. So while we're glad to see USB 3 in the system, this kind of external wiring is definitely an amateurish design decision. Otherwise, you get all the ports we like to see in a system like this. There's a ton of USB 2 ports in the back of the system, as well as one free USB 3 slot. There's a PS2 old school uh, mouse and keyboard jack. You get eSATA as well as powered eSATA. There's 7.1 analog audio as well as SPDIF optical audio out up here. Now between the two graphics cards here, you also get a lot of display output options. You got four DVI outs, an HDMI output on each card, as well as a full-size display port out on each card. Now for gaming purposes, the system probably isn't ideal if you want to set up multiple high-resolution monitors. But if you want to connect a large TV or a couple lower-res screens, the system is definitely up for the task. Now we mentioned the case is easy to use, and by that, mostly we mean it's easy to get inside. There's two latches here in the side panel. They pull down, and the door pops up just like that. It's nice and easy. Now inside the case is actually something we haven't seen before. This plastic plate installed on top of the motherboard covers up all the circuitry and the transistors you usually see inside a case. And it definitely goes a long way towards neatening up the overall appearance here. Between the plate and the wiring that's pretty much invisible in the system, Digital Storm has really done a nice job inside the case. Component-wise, it's pretty straightforward stuff for a system in this $2,500 price range. Up here, you've got the liquid cooling hardware going down to an Intel Core i7-2600K CPU. And that CPU is overclocked to 4.8 GHz, making it super fast, and that is how Digital Storm sells the system. For memory, you get 8 gigs of RAM with this PC, as well as two free slots if you want to upgrade later. You'll see there's two NVIDIA GTX 570 graphics cards. And there's two uh, 1x PCI Express slots on the motherboard. They're a little bit hard to see. For the hard drives, Digital Storm gives you a 128 gigabyte solid state drive that has Windows on it. And for general storage, you get a 1 terabyte drive down here. Now you can also see from all the free drive base here that there's plenty of room to expand. But that said, there's no cabling behind these slots, so you have to do that yourself. So in our lab, we found that Ode Level 3 was one of the fastest, if not the fastest, gaming PCs in its price category. So between its speed, its features, its great looking case, and its aggressive price, the system is an easy editor's choice winner. So I'm Rich Brown, this is the Digital Storm Ode Level 3. That's one good looking gaming rig, but seriously? 
There wasn't any other way to power that USB 3 port without that little pigtail sticking out the back? I mean, I guess you could always just unplug it, skip the port on top. At least, that's what I would do. Dropbox is probably one of the most widely known cloud storage services around, but it's oh so much more than just that. Sharon Vaknin has a few tips to help make you a Dropbox master. Hey everyone, I'm Sharon Vaknin for CNET.com. Dropbox is one of the great cloud storage tools like SugarSync or SkyDrive that lets you sync files with any computer. When you put a file into your Dropbox, you can access it on any other computer or mobile phone. Lots of people use it for project management, as a virtual thumb drive, or as a way to share files with friends. But today, I have four new ways to use Dropbox. On my Facebook page, I asked you guys to give me your best tips, and I'm including a couple of those too. To get Dropbox, go to dropbox.com, sign up for an account, and download the desktop client. You'll automatically get two gigs of storage free, and you'll start using it right away. To upload files to your Dropbox, you can upload it through the web client or drag it into the Dropbox folder on your desktop. But a very clever way to get things in your folder is by emailing it. Go to sendtodropbox.com, where you'll get a special email address you can use to email attachments to your Dropbox. So if my friend sends me an email with his new mix and I can't save it on my iPhone because it doesn't do that, I can just forward it to my unique Dropbox email address and it'll automatically get uploaded to my Dropbox folder. Another company got creative and built a tool that lets you upload target links to your Dropbox. For instance, if a restaurant has a PDF of nutritional facts on their website, you can copy the link, paste it into urldroplet.com, and it'll be uploaded to your Dropbox. So it's nice. You can find a link and upload it that way, or email attachments and your files will be waiting for you on another computer or phone whenever you're ready. You can automate things even more with this awesome trick. No matter where you are, you can use Dropbox to remotely start downloading torrents. To show you, I'll use uTorrent, but the steps are similar for other BitTorrent clients too. So what you have to do on a Mac is open uTorrent and go to Preferences. Then head over to Downloads and check Automatically Open Torrent Files Found In and browse to select your Dropbox folder. On Windows, go to Preferences, then Directories. Check the box next to Automatically Load Torrents From and select your Dropbox folder. Since torrent files can be big, set them to download somewhere else on your hard drive. Just remember that if you use this trick, your home computer needs to stay on and running uTorrent. But now you can start torrents no matter where you are, for whatever legal purposes you like, of course. Like I mentioned, lots of people use Dropbox as a virtual USB drive. And since you really can't forget to take it with you, it's a convenient solution for accessing your documents. But Lifehacker points out that since it's not the default documents folder, you might forget to change the target folder to your Dropbox when you're saving documents. So why not make Dropbox your default documents folder? On Windows 7 or Vista, right-click your documents folder, select properties, and then on the location tab, you can specify the new file path. Click move and then select your Dropbox folder. On a Mac, open up terminal and type CD Dropbox. Then type this command, which will create a documents folder in your Dropbox that automatically syncs with your desktop and other computers. And on my Facebook page, Jason Wong reminded me that Dropbox will save all versions of your docs for 30 days. Just go to the Dropbox web interface, hover over a file, and click the arrow to view previous versions of it. And finally, Javier left a message on my page explaining that you can use Dropbox as your own photo stream. With the Android and iPhone apps, you can upload photos from your phone directly to your Dropbox or take photos within the application and view them anywhere. And you can even make a public photos folder to share with friends and family. By now, though, you might be wondering if two gigabytes is enough for all these tricks. Two gigs is good for most, but if you need more storage, don't forget that Dropbox gives you 250 megabytes for every friend you refer. But don't start making fake email addresses and inviting yourself. Dropbox is a little smarter than that. If you have any more tips, let me know on my Facebook page. And visit howto.cnet.com for more how-tos. For CNET, I'm Sharon Vaknin, and I'll see you on the interwebs. See, there are perfectly legal files that can be easily shared via torrents, like Linux distro images. And I'm sure there are other things, too. 
While I try to think of some more, let's take a break. But we've still got a lot more tech review right after this. Welcome back to the CNET Tech Review, our weekly video digest of all things good and bad we've seen here at CNET TV. Continuing on in the good, we are slowly coming around to the idea that Blu-ray has won and it's time to get a Blu-ray DVD player, but only because they have so many streaming services built in. Cooley's here to count down the top five Blu-ray players that you might never use to play discs. Little Silver Discs, they've sort of had their run. CD, DVD, even Blu-ray, feeling the heat of streaming delivery and digital download. But that said, when you want the best video quality in your home TV room, you've still got to pop in a disc. I'm Brian Cooley with the top five Blu-ray players, according to CNET review scores. And all of them, by the way, do a lot more than just great high def. Number five is the Samsung BD D6700. We love its huge array of streaming services. It has dual HDMI outputs. You'd use that if you want to run separate dedicated video and audio feeds out of it to different gear. It's got a generous one gigabyte of onboard memory for features like BD Live, and it can be controlled from an app. Well, what can't these days? On the other hand, it's stubbornly pricey at around 270 bucks in a world filled with $175 Blu-ray decks. Number four is the Sony BDP-S580. This guy has about the best array of streaming services, except it's missing MLB.com. It has built-in Wi-Fi as well. It's fast, which is really important when you're hopping around all the features and chapters of a data-heavy Blu-ray disc. There's also an iPhone and an Android control app, and they're free. Unlike the Samsung we just talked about, it doesn't do 2D to 3D conversion, but we think that's kind of a joke anyway. The biggest drawback on this guy is Sony's custom interface for getting to all the connected stuff. It could be the worst in the business. Classic Sony, but the rest is great. Number three is the LG BD670. It's kind of the opposite of the Sony. It has a tremendous, easy to use interface for all the online services. Also built in Wi-Fi, but no onboard memory for accessing BD Live online content. But we seldom find ourselves doing that anyway, so who cares? Same lack of silly 2D to 3D conversion. Look, basically this guy plays the hits. It does all the important stuff well and leaves the gimmicks to the other ones. The number two best Blu-ray player right now is the Panasonic DMP BDT210. Built in Wi-Fi again, great streaming services, including MLB, and a price right there in that $180 sweet spot. All great, but sealing the deal on this guy is that it's the fastest Blu-ray player we've ever tested. Fast at loading and navigating discs. If you haven't tried a Blu-ray deck, you don't realize how important that is. There's also a touch-free disc tray loading technology that's a little bit much. But overall, this is our favorite Blu-ray disc player. Now hold that thought. Before I bring you to number one, what are you going to feed your new Blu-ray deck? We just revised our list of the top 40 Blu-ray discs. These are great transfers the studios really sweated over instead of just shoveling. The kinds of discs that make you remember why you still have a big old bookcase full of DVDs in your TV room. Go check it out. Okay, remember I said a minute ago that the number two Panasonic BDT-210 was our favorite Blu-ray player. So what's above that? The value king, that's who. The Sony PS3 Slim. That's our number one pick. At just a few bucks more than the number five Samsung deck, you'll get a solid Blu-ray player, a high-def game console, living room web browser, AV streaming machine, and all of that wrapped up in an easy to use interface that we like a lot. Now you can't play PS2 games on this guy, and only Bluetooth universal remotes work with it, which is weird. But if you're gonna go to get the most for your money, this is the machine for you. To catch the latest CNET reviews of all the Blu-ray players, go to CNET, click on home video, they're all in there. And for more top fives like this one, go to top5.cnet.com. I'm Brian Cooley. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I'll tell you what I'm waiting for in addition to all the streaming services and web integration and fast performance, maybe some cooler names. Really, the BMP and the BDT and the DBB, I'm not going to remember any of that standing in the store. PS3 Slim, though, easy to remember. 
In addition to impossible naming conventions, let's see what else is wrong with the world this week in the bad. As the tablet wars rage on, for every winner like the iPad 2 or the Galaxy Tab, there has to be a loser. And thanks to Donald Bell, we found another one. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and today we're taking a first look at the Velocity Micro Cruise T301. This is an Android tablet with a 7-inch screen and a low, low street price of $160. It's running a modified version of Android 2.2, and like a lot of the budget tablets we see, Google's official apps for Gmail, Maps, and Marketplace, and others aren't included. You get a decent email app, though, and the web browser is also pretty good. And you also notice that the apps for Kindle and Facebook are included right out of the box. We were also able to get Amazon's Android App Store working here, but popular game downloads like Angry Birds and Fruit Ninja weren't compatible, so don't get your hopes up in terms of gaming. In terms of hardware, I've definitely seen worse in this price range. It weighs about a pound, and the screen quality isn't great, but the build quality is actually pretty resilient. The only Achilles heel here is that the plastic on the back can be peeled off pretty easily. To you, that might be a feature, but I would think twice before letting a kid around this. On the side here, you'll find a nice oversized volume switch. The top has a power button and a full-size SD card slot, also a mini USB connection. On the bottom, there's a pair of speakers, a headphone jack, and a connection for the included power adapter. On the whole, it's an okay general-purpose tablet for the money. If you're buying this as an e-reader, though, you'll probably be disappointed by the weight and the screen quality. If it's something you're picking up for a kid, your kid's probably going to be disappointed that they can't play Angry Birds on this, and I recommend spending the extra $50 on an iPod Touch. So that's the Cruise T301 from Velocity Micro. For CNET.com, I'm Donald Bell. Remember, there's a difference between inexpensive and cheap. Though I suppose the cruise is technically both. Let's go ahead and wrap things up with this week's bottom line. Summer is officially here, and that means the summer blockbuster movie season is already in full swing. And thanks to the film tie-ins featured in this week's Tap That App, you can enjoy the movie experience long after the house lights come up. Welcome to Tap That App, I'm Brian Tong, and this is the show where we cover the hottest apps in the mobile space. Now, it's the summer blockbuster movie season, and we're here to show you some of the sweetest companion apps for your favorite flicks on your iOS devices. Now, first up is Super 8. This J.J. Abrams and Steven Spielberg collaboration is getting hyped up, and you can be a part of it with the iPhone and iPod Touch app for 99 cents. Now, you can record a short movie using a variety of gritty filters and effects, create your movie with clips, share them, and if you're lucky, you'll see a frame from Super 8 inside your movie, get them all, and you'll see a clip from the actual movie. Now, if you want something a little more lighthearted, check out the Zookeeper movie app. It's free for the iPhone and iPad and includes three mini games like grabbing bananas with a monkey or leaves with a giraffe. It might entertain the kids, but honestly, it's pretty lame, so you're lucky it's free. Now, comic book fans have a lot to look forward to this summer, and fans of X-Men First Class get a free digital magazine for the iPad showcasing how the X-Men have played an important part in historical events, including how John F. Kennedy planned to deal with Magneto, because that really happened. Now, not all movies have dedicated apps that work in tandem with the movies, but Green Lantern fans can download the DC Comics Green Lantern app on their iPhone or iPad. It allows you to download free excerpts from the comic book series and bone up on your knowledge with Green Lantern 101 to get you up to speed. And Captain America First Avenger fans, download the Marvel Comics app on either your iPhone or iPad for free, and you'll have access to Captain America First Vengeance for free. It's the official prequel to the movie in addition to other comics as well. And let's not forget the over-the-top Transformers Dark of the Moon movie coming out the end of June. Now, there's no official movie app, but why not annoy your friends, family, and neighbors with the 99 cents Transformer soundboard? See what I mean? All right, if you guys have any other apps you think are worthy to be here that we missed, send them to tap that app at CNET.com. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Woo! The bottom line this week, I've got butter on my phone. That Super 8 app is so cool. 
Here's a little film my producer shot over the weekend. It totally reminds me of some of the old home movies my parents had from when they were kids, with better haircuts, of course. And if you haven't seen Super 8, be sure to stick around for a surprise during the credits. It's almost as good as the movie itself. All right, folks, that's our show. Come back next week for an all-new CNET Tech Review. Until then, there are tons of great videos available every day at CNETTV.com. I'll see you next time, and thank you for watching.